Hey guys, welcome to Sledder Series. I'm your host, Dave Nerona, and today I'm gonna to take you through the Climb Atlas 26 liter Alpride Avi Pack. Now we've talked or done a video on the Aspec 16 liter uh, Alpride Avi Pack, but today we're gonna to talk about the Atlas 26, show you a little bit about the differences, uh, why I also use this pack quite a bit for what I do, and I hope it gives you the idea of which one you want to choose that best suits you for the different things that you want to want to do. So let's get at it right away. So when we talk about the At, um, Atlas 26, obviously has 10 liters of more space. Is it noticeable? You bet it is. Is it noticeable in weight? What I always say about a pack is how you load it is more important than the overall weight of the pack. Of course, we don't want something super heavy that in, in the pack itself on its own, but most packs are very similar. And I will say one of the advantages with the Elpride capacitor system is that the pack is extremely light, whether in the 16 or the 26 liter. It is literally the lightest system that you can purchase these days. One ad advantage as well is that you can you can set it off multiple times recharging in between those times but you could set it off the night before to test it and use it all weekend test it through the week test it the night before you go riding the next weekend and just charge it in between those intervals you can also charge it out on the hill so it makes it extremely adaptive to all the different things that i personally do and probably a lot of the things that you do as well now getting into the overall uh, look of the pack it's very, very similar uh, to the Aspect 16. So again, just more space. This first pocket down low here on the uh, Atlas is a little bit bigger. Of course, this is your toolkit that comes with the pack. Uh, we talked about this before. I prefer to keep, if I load this with tools, to keep it in my tunnel bag, that therefore keeping weight off my back. But you can use this for tools or anything and keep it in your tunnel bag or on the pack, whatever you prefer. But it's got a huge pocket in here and a huge mesh pocket to keep things separated. And uh, what I love about this pack too is, as you can see, very simple zippers with a nice draw cord so they're easy to do with a gloved hand. Up top here is the goggle bag. This time we didn't, I didn't uh, put all my stuff in it because I wanted to actually show you some of the... Um, how big the pockets are that this can accept a pair of goggles and a pair of sunglasses um, and it comes with a nice uh, goggle or glasses wipe right in there uh, super easy to get to and this goggle um, area also has a hardened sort of shell that's not heavier it's just literally protects your goggles which to me is is really important with one uh, clip of the buckle here we'll get into these red zips and this is where we're going to keep our avalanche gear okay so as you can see there's a designated spot for our probe and our shovel our shovel handle and again we'll talk a little bit about having um, a search grid pattern some of the things you need to follow um, if you for, do forget, because it can have, if an avalanche happens, it can be a panic situation, you can refer to things here, which I think is a great uh, idea. And it's also nice that they have their own designated area for this. So you know where it is and you can get to it really, really quickly. Now, one of the things that is different on the uh, uh, Atlas 26 is this side package here. And this is actually a quick release probe. Now, um, all you have to do is unbuckle this and the probe will come out, slide out, and we'll just take it out right there. So that as quick as it can be, and then you can actually stick it back up and close it as well. You can do this on your own with practice, or a friend can do that. And the whole purpose of this is to actually get your probe out as quickly as possible. Now, we'll talk a little bit about this. Um, most people never touch their Avi gear. They only touch their shovel if they're digging out. Um, besides be, uh, an, uh, you know, being involved or in an avalanche scenario, which hopefully doesn't happen very often. And, um, and the same with their probe. However, both these tools can be, should be used and can be used every day to give you a big picture of what the snowpack is doing. So what I do and what I love about this, um, this quick deploying probe box here is that it allows me to take my probe out easier without taking my pack off. And that enables me to use my probe throughout the day. One, to measure snow depth so I can see how the snow pack snow stacking up. Two, as I push the probe through the snow, I can actually feel where those layers are without having to dig a huge pit. I'm a proponent of digging pits, but I can do quicker analysis 
throughout the day with my probe if I use it properly. Number one, that uh, does two things. It, it gives me better information of what's going on, big picture, to what I might have compared to the avalanche forecast and what people have been saying online, what the area's been with the weather forecast. And now it gives me another sort of little picture of the big picture of what the snowpack's doing, where that, how big that layer is, if it's a storm layer and, uh, and it went big, how much snow that would actually be. It gives you a, a really good picture of that and it allows me to do it really quickly. Most people don't do it because it's kind of a pain to get in their pack and do it. I also carry a probe a lot of the times in my tunnel bag or attached to my tunnel bag for this very reason. If it's easier to access, you will do it more and use it and you'll learn more. And that's really important when we're talking about mitigating danger through avalanche terrain. So it's the same reason why I love having my shovel on my tunnel bag is you still wanna have all this gear on your person but the extra ones are there to use. I use them 100% of the time. Only would use this stuff if I couldn't get it, get it off my sled, i.e. I got separated from it. So having your probe there is another great example of, of doing just that. And I think it's a really uh, leading um, advantage to have that and something uh, I think that uh, what Climb's done is really, really cool. Now, as we move to the body of the pack, actually, the other thing I'll tell is we've turned this pack on, and I don't know if you can see it, but the light should come on there. There it is. So when you turn the pack on, or if it's off, you can check through this sort of screen here that allows you, uh, so you can ask your buddy, am I, you know, still, still green? When the pack is on, it actually is hardly using any of the capacitor power. So I've used this multiple days in a row without charging it and never had a problem. If you do set it off, then you do have to charge it. We'll get into that a little bit when we talk about the capacitor system. But when we talk about the area for the 26 liter, and I'm going to actually turn the pack around because it doesn't open like a full coffin bag like the 16 liter does it offers more on a corner. So I keep my radio and my lunch in here, as well as this is the area that houses the capacitor. Now it has a Velcro system here, so it actually swings out, which is really cool. And I'll do that. So this is the system right here. We unzip it. I'll give you a little bit of a good look at it right here. So this is the capacitor fan area right here. Um, to turn it on and off, you just pull this button and turn it on or off. This is the release valve when your airbag goes off to push it in and turn it to let the air out. And this is the, uh, has a USB charger just right here. And then this piece right here is the area that houses the two AA batteries. So I'll talk a little bit about this system and how it works. Basically what you do when you first get the pack, of course you charge it right up. And when you turn it on, there's three lights, green, yellow, and red. If it's green, you're good to go. If it's yellow, you're gonna need to charge it. And one of the ways, if you have batteries in here, it will just self charge um, the system. And at yellow, it'll probably be under 20 minutes to do that. If it's completely red, it'll take about 30 to 35 minutes to do that. You can also you use a USB power pack out in the backcountry. So if you put that in and plugged it in, in about 20 to 25 minutes, you would actually recharge it. So what it means, and I'll give you the example I used in with my uh, 16 liter uh, aspect is one day I was like super deep day got stuck really big stuck so I knew I'd be in there for sure half an hour by myself digging it out digging the sled between these trees that I got caught so as I was like pinning and wiggling it to try and make it out the last pit my um, avi pack uh, the uh, pull cord got stuck on my handlebars and my airbag went off so kind of a little bit of an embarrassing situation but really it happens to all of us and one of the great things about this system is on any other system, I would kind of be hooped for the day, meaning that now my airbag is not gonna go off unless I had another canister. So the reality is with this, what I did is I packed, I took my pack off, I folded the airbag, let the air out, folded the airbag and put it back in. And then I turned the system off and the two batteries went to work charging the system. And within the time that I took uh, had taken my helmet off and shovel, got my shovel out, dug my sled out, got everything. My friend Theo had come up there. We, we fooled around a little bit as far as just making some videos, laughing. He's laughing at me because I'm stuck. And then um, when I put everything back on, ready to go, my pack was actually flashing green. So it had charged in that time. I'm going to say 35 to 40 minutes. We were probably there and we had a snack just because it was a, the, probably the biggest stuck of the day. And, um, and so I was ready to go and, and the bag was armed again. So 
Um, very, very cool system what it can be. So there's a cup, bunch of different ways that you can charge it and it is a very simple yet light and very effective system. So it is on now and then we just do this zipper up. And the other thing that's great about it is seriously uh, when you travel, if you're traveling to the mountains and you're staying overnight in a hotel on Friday, you can set it off with your buddies and then recharge it overnight and it just actually the more you use an avi pack the better you're going to be using it if you get into a really bad situation so for me that's really really important so again radio goes in here cord goes under to the front which we'll talk about and my lunch anything that i don't want jostled around in my tunnel bag really goes in here but overall i try to keep this uh, area as light as possible when we put the pack on, it is very similar to a regular backpack, which differs a little bit from the Aspect 16, which has sort of a little bit of a chest plate, but we'll do the sternum strap up. And then of course, again, Climb's done a really good job. Right in the middle is the crotch strap, which you always want to wear. This prevents the pack from rising up and come pulling off your body. It stay, keeps it on your body. So you want to make sure you have that done up at all times and that it is done up snug and then just pull your um pull your straps snug and you're good to go now what i love about this pack is your trigger you can move from side to side um, i have it on my right side so i can pull with my left but i can also pull with my right which is really important to me and i like the way how it kicks out and really simple it's also highly adjustable it has seven or eight places where you can move it so that you get it in the perfect spot and make sure that you take the time to do that and also can fold in really easy with the, with the zipper when you're not an avalanche train or at lunch or wherever when you're traveling to and from the hill in the car it just has it in here pull it out get into avalanche train open it up and, and it's right there ready for you to go on this side is where i keep my baofeng radio so lots of room in there and the radio you can actually hear through the mesh so you can actually keep it covered up i prefer to have mine out and sitting right here so it's close and easy to get to and then the cable runs right down behind the airbag into the pack so very very clean and simple uh, solution and system so the other thing i love about the atlas um, 26 is that it's got these massive waist pockets. This is something I do miss on the 16 liter pack. And this is a great place uh, to keep your Zolio or to keep anything that you really need quick, whether it be safety gear or just a snack that you can have right there. And it's really easy to get to again, great um, zip tabs that you can use with a glove finger. So very, very cool. And you can see how easy it is to get to that quick deploy probe. Just one click of this and the probe falls out I have it in my hand. I actually practice it a lot so I can put it back into the pack. But if you can or have a hard time, you can always ask a friend to do that. So again, uh, really easy to, to get at all the things in, in your pack. When we talk about setting off the Avi bag, it works pretty much the same way. <laughs> so very quick deploying system, very simple. Um, and now you can see I have 150 liters in this uh, Alp Ride system and uh, very light. I still have all the visibility around me. And now when we talk about repacking the bag, we're gonna take the pack off. We're gonna find a suitable flat table, like so. And we're going to go in and to the main body of the pack, to the capacitor, and we're going to hit that. Once you get all the air out of the airbag, then you can proceed to fold the airbag back using the folds to see how it folds back into itself and fold it right in completely using, getting all that last little bit of air out and then closing up the zipper. Well, there you go, guys. We're right back where we started. The airbag's been deployed, folded back in. And now all we have to do is either use a wall plug to charge the system back up, a USB power charger, or we can use those two AA batteries to get the system back up to the green light that we need to deploy the bag. So very, very simple. I hope that shows you the difference between the two bags. The reason why I have both is for snowmobiling, I like to be as small as possible, carry as little weight as possible myself. So I absolutely love 
the Aspec 16 liter. It's the smallest bag of the two and it's all I need for snowmobiling. However, I also do a lot of sled skiing and touring off my snowmobile. So that's where we'll take their snowmobile out there and then we'll go skiing for the day. And if uh, not uh, using it as a chairlift, if we're touring off, usually, or yes, you have to carry more gear. Usually when you're climbing up, you need you, you shed layers. So that means you take off your goggles and toque and your, and your jacket. And then when you get up top, you put it back on. So you need a little bit more space in the pack. Je definitely in the winter months when you're carrying a little bit more um, then it all can stay in the pack and it's not hanging off your pack getting uh, saturated with snow on the way up so that's why i use both for those who who do both do a lot of different things of uh, ski touring or sledding and sled skiing then i would sort of put you into purchasing the 26 liter because really it's not that much difference for sledding as long as you don't over pack it it's not really going to be heavier um, but then you have the bigger um, capacity for when you need it. So really, if with a one pack, the 26 liter Atlas is the way to go. If you're just a snowmobiler and you're only ever going to use it for that and you just maybe do some sled skiing or sled snowboarding where you don't really need to carry extra gear in your pack for that, then the uh, Aspect 16 is, uh, is the pack that you should look at. Whatever you uh, decide, you can check them both out at climb.com or your favorite sledder retail. We'll see you out in the backcountry.